My name is Annette Abonin. I suppose I'm an artist, illustrator, graphic designer, web designer, a little bit of everything. I'm self-employed since 1998 and my business is Abelina Art and I also do web design mainly, work for Silver Trees, a small company on the coast. The work I do for Silver Trees is um, collaborative, so it means I do one part of a cog in designing or creating or making um, a website or a product or something that's used for online purposes. It seems smaller than what it what it is because it, it branches out. So in the office there might just be me and the guy I work for, but there are people working in Sydney and there are people working in other places as well and they do like the developing the code, all the back end stuff is done elsewhere to a large extent and then they deliver that and then we work on the other bits and pieces and then we get some design elements dropped in from other guys that are working on things. I do a lot of the work from home as well. Because it's online, it means that I have the access to, you know, manage and upload and grab files from whichever computer I'm on and that makes it easy, you know, I can do, do the work from here but sometimes it's good to have that um, touch base and you can sit down, have a coffee, go through things. It's good to have the, the web design work on the side of things because it keeps me sane, it keeps me focused and organised and just having something there that that you have a deadline for that's a bit more obvious than the one that you set yourself. It keeps you organised and it actually flows into other work as well. Having a balance is good and working to a brief is the good thing about that is if it's a good brief that the, it doesn't necessarily have to fit with what I like to do but if it's clear and, and, and everyone's on the same page it's really easy to work to a brief like that. Most of the time people have a different idea of what what a brief is and they might say oh you know if you just just do that and invariably there'll be changes down the road which you learn to work with that but when you have the the people that can't or the clients that can't let go of the design aspect and they're there going oh but you know how about I've just done this really cool logo and I did it in Word and maybe we could just put it in there because I'm really precious about it and I want it to be there. It's about stepping on toes and keeping people happy and on rare occasions you end up with, a, with an absolutely um, not suitable logo sitting there just because the one one. I work in different ways. I, I work for exhibitions where um, the last number of years we've had um, a, an art group that I belong to and we set a theme and then we work towards an exhibition. Okay, so that's the first step when you sit around like four or five artists and go this is what we're going to do and then and then you go off and you work but because you may be thinking okay there's that many of us and we've got this big space to sort of fill and then the ideas just come. I've never had the the problem of a white canvas or a white piece of paper and that going oh I don't know what to do. It's it, to me it helps having just that little bit of structure that says this is this is where the this is sort of the box that you have to fit the artwork into. Then I do commissioned work, which is some um, someone asks for perhaps a portrait or um, a website or something like that, and I do. I do the work based around what they want. Usually the, the process is, you know, I work out what, what someone wants and um, if it's a painting, a portrait, they send me some photos and I do some sketches and then uh, just keep an update as the work is progressing so that people can see where it's heading. I can usually work out roughly what someone wants from a conversation and sit down and perhaps have a look at what's already there if there is anything. I'm a penaholic so I could not give up traditional um, drawing mediums. I think to me the doing something with your hands and that's like translating what you draw on paper to drawing on the tablet. It's pretty much the same thing but they marry up for me. Then 
I've always loved tarot cards. I came in contact with them maybe 20 something years ago. I'd say that there's different types of people who are drawn to tarot cards and I'm, I, I like them for the, for the images and for the symbolism. Being visual, it's something that you can use to, to just let that logical part of your mind take a break. When I came up with the idea to do my own tarot deck, it was about three and a half, four years ago. So I thought, oh, I'll do the 22 major cards and just illustrate them as a sort of a, a bit of an aspect of self thing, really. It all started as ink drawing, and then I scanned each drawing and I painted it in Photoshop. And it took three and a half years to do them all, and I've, I've really enjoyed doing each one. It's just then finally getting to the point where you're starting to see them as yeah, a finished deck of cards really that I could get printed. Um, I went to school in Sweden even though I'm not Swedish and their compulsory school system finishes year nine so every course is, is topic based. So I chose fine art and it was a, a purely fine art based course so it was like art school. So I did two years of that and then I did another year of um, fine art study yes. and then I did three more years of fine art and ceramic and design studies and then I came out here and I did my um, diploma of fine arts at East Sydney's so National Art School. So it was eight years and I loved it, I absolutely loved it. it. I was young so I think it allowed me to grow up through just being completely just finding my way. Up at Newcastle I taught there for 10 years um, part-time it, within tape, so Hunter Street tape, and it was in the ceramics department. I really loved um, a lot of it. I thought it was sad to see that the diploma disappeared. Mm. It dwindled, and then towards the end, I had I think we had a certificate for. I do think it's really sad that ten years from now, someone's going to wake up and realise that they should have funded arts-based education a lot more because all the jobs that are coming through from now on are going to rely on those skills. We need people who have that visual and you know dynamic kind of skill base and if we don't focus on it on education sort of level then you're going to end up with that sort of backpedaling and yeah anyway it's sad. I am um, not a good salesperson. The concept of having to, to promote and to sell yourself it is such a big part of working in any creative field today. That is the hardest thing. I'm, I'm not good at um, selling myself or telling people that, you know, really you've got to go with, you know, my designs or my this or this. But it's also just that you really are more focused on wanting to do the work than spend time promoting work. It's well worth it. If, if you're passionate about art or creative work or design or anything like that, I think some people call you know certain professions a lifestyle choice rather than a monetary and I think I have to agree with that. Like I I might make more doing something else but I don't know if um, sanity wise I'd be able to. If you're passionate about it I think you should do it.